All right, YouTube, welcome back to the Brad and Kyle channel. Today, we're going to be talking about the difference between asymmetrical bowling balls and symmetrical bowling balls. Stay tuned. All right, Brad, so when bowlers walk into their local pro shop, they're wanting to buy a ball, we have these things called asymmetrical bowling balls and symmetrical bowling balls. Now, it could, this is where the science of bowling kind of kicks in. Could be a little confusing for the consumer on what the difference is. So explain to us, and let's get into it, what's the difference between these two types? Well, first and foremost, there are only two types. There are only two types of bowling balls you can use if you go into your pro shop, a symmetric and an asymmetric. And there's a different in ball reaction, but we'll get to that in a second. First, let's just actually talk about what the structural difference between these bowling balls are. So we'll start with the symmetric. A symmetric bowling ball, and, and just the word symmetric, if anything is symmetric, it is completely identical from one side of the object to the other side. So if you were to take, if you were to take this bowling ball and cut it directly in half, one side is going to look exactly like the other side. Yeah, and we're talking about the cores in here, the inside. Yes, yes. Obviously, the actual bone ball is round, but the inside of the ball is the core that's in the ball is what we're talking about is asymmetrical or symmetrical. Yep, there's a core wrapped around a cover. What we're talking about is the core. So, uh, yeah, symmetrical, identical from one side to another. And that changes the shape or the, the curve of the bowling ball, which differs from an asymmetric bowling ball which is obviously, if you cut it down the middle, one side is going to be different from the other. And these, the ball developers, they noticed that they could get different types of reactions out of these bowling balls when they change the, the structure of the, of the, the, uh, core, yeah. the core from one side to another. It creates a different ball reaction than if it was actually symmetrical. Yeah, and, and obviously we're just talking about the core. That's the difference between asymmetrical balls and symmetrical balls. The cover stocks, you can put the same cover stocks on the balls, but we're just talking about the core. So, Brad, now that we kind of talked about what is an asym or symmetrical ball, now what's the difference in reaction that you'll get? Because that's, that's the important part that the consumer needs to understand. And this is, I think this is the one that's a little bit more up for discussion. Hey, I hold think on it's, I'm yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it probably differs a little bit from, from one person to another, um, and, I, and I think if you kind of dig deep and do a lot of practice in between the two, you'll kind of find your own little. But we'll just talk about our experiences. So in an, an asymmetrical bowling ball, uh, the core is lopsided in a way. It, yeah, it's, it doesn't, in, it's imbalanced. It's imbalanced, okay? Well, that imbalance causes the ball to want to roll a little earlier which is why you see a lot of players use asymmetric bowling balls on heavier oil patterns right. generally. Yeah. It's because you want the ball to roll early on heavier oil patterns and that's what asymmetric, the, the imbalance of the, sh the core just makes the ball want to read up earlier. It also makes the ball want to flare a little bit more. Right, that imbalance causes that ball to want to flare more. So your asymmetrical balls are gonna f generally flare more than your symmetrical balls. Yep, and, and, and the symmetrical balls, I would say, are a little bit smoother, but this is where it gets hairy. Okay, so asymmetric bowling balls, a lot of times we throw them on heavier oil because we want the ball to read up sooner. Now, if you were to throw, and it, that would cause the ball to rev up earlier and then hook more overall. Um, if we bowl on lighter oil, say your house shot at home hooks a lot, um, and you try and throw an asymmetric ball, you may not get a whole lot of hook out of it. Why, Kyle? Why would you, why would you say that? And this is really important, and this is where it's like the asyms are the big hook monsters, but because they're so imbalanced and they're trying to respond to friction and get to a balanced position, the ball is constantly trying to get to a balanced position as it's going down the lane. It can actually respond to that friction too much thus losing energy and not really hooking a lot down line. And when we say friction, we mean hook. So just if your house shot has a lot of hook and your ball is almost uncontrollable, you could actually probably go to an asymmetric bowling ball and get more control out of it than let's say a symmetric bowling ball, which sounds weird because if a ball hooks a lot more on heavy oil patterns and you would think if you get it on light oil that it's just gonna hook way too much. And it can sometimes, but then there's also times where the ball just actually, it, it tries to hook too much and then it just rolls out. 
Like the right. at the end of the pattern, the ball just goes dead straight. It has no energy whatsoever left in the pins. We see a lot of plaque tins. We see a lot of like weird leaves when uh, an asymmetric ball is thrown and it's rolling out too much. Yeah. Yeah, we actually see a lot that the transition, a lot of times early in a block, if we're going to tournament, we'll throw some asymm balls because they're hooking more overall. They're responding to the friction and they're just, they're giving us that nice overall hook that we need. We need that, we need the ball to hook. Mm -hmm. And as the block continues, as the lanes get drier and drier, we'll actually see the symmetrical balls seem to hook more because, and I'm talking more down lane, yeah. because the, the ASIM balls are using all their energy. Front to back, they're hooking so early that they have no energy left down lane. So it's weird that these ASIM balls, like they're supposed to hook so much, but if at times they actually seem to hook less down lane. Now, when I say hook less, they're making less motion side to side. Front to back, they're actually hooking more than a symmetrical ball. So that's kind of the reason, you know, we like to transition from ASIM balls early in the block to symmetrical balls later in the block. Now, I know this can seem confusing because we're talking about all these motions, but it makes sense once you get the idea and you get going with it. And you just and it's trial and error. Yeah, trial and error. Give it a shot at home. I mean, if you're throwing an asymmetric ball and the house shot is like somewhat dry and it's giving you like a rollout effect, like it's almost, it's just not hooking. Well, then that makes sense. It's an, it's, it's, tr it's actually trying to hook too much is exactly. what it's doing. Exactly. <laughs> it's uh it's, tr it's too strong of a ball is what we like to say on tour. And it, it just, it kind of tells you what you need. Like if you're throwing an asymmetric ball and it's rolling out, well then go to a symmetric ball. Then you should see more down lane motion on higher friction patterns on the heavier oil. Uh, it would kind of seem like the opposite. The, the the symmetric balls seem to go a little straighter in the back end because they never really get into a roll. Yeah, they never and then the roll. asymmetric balls actually get into a roll and they seem to roll better. So a lot of trial and error, but a lot of discussion as well. Yeah, so now that we've given you a brief explanation, I have an asymmetrical ball here, a symmetrical ball. They're both shiny. we got a fresh house shot here. Why not throw some shots throw and shot. kind of let the viewer see if they can tell the difference. All right, Kyle, so now that you've had a chance to throw both bowling balls, just to note, this is a very typical house shot, a little on the drier side. Which ball would you choose? Yeah, so I want to talk a little bit about the difference in reaction, and it may be a little hard for the viewers at home to see, especially if you don't know what you're looking for. But the Prism Hybrid for me, and that's the asymmetrical ball. <laughs> yeah, that's the asymmetrical ball. That, that ball, I stood in the same place with both because I wanted to see the, the true difference in reactions. And I was getting to the pocket with both. The ASIM ball definitely read the lane harder front to back. To me, I saw less, mo less motion down lane and it was a lot, it hooked earlier and it was a lot straighter. Okay. Now the symmetrical ball, which is the uppercut, that ball for me was a little cleaner and continued more down lane. And you can tell by a little bit of the hits. I think one of the hits, I left a ringing 710, which that usually tells me my ball is coming too far, going too far down the lane and then getting into the pocket. And that's a key sign that the ball is going too long. And that's what the symmetrical ball would do. Now, if you ask me what ball to choose, I think I'm going to choose the asymmetrical ball to start. I think I want a ball that's going to stand up a little quicker and be a little smoother down lane. Now, the thing is that the symmetrical ball, when it goes through the pins, man, it is like crunching through the pins. But I have a better chance of stoning a nine pin, bringing a 710, bringing a 10 pin because it's just going a little too far down the lane for this fresh house shot. And at what point do you think you would switch to the symmetric? So I would throw the ASIM 
for a few games. And then when I, when I feel like I'm throwing really good shots and the ball is losing too much energy and I leave those rag tens where I'm like, mm, that should have carried. Well, now I know I have a symmetrical ball that's pretty similar in overall motion, but it's gonna clear that spot and retain more energy down lane. So probably after a couple games, I would think about going to the symmetrical ball. And the, the, the common thing that happens generally is the ball's just rolling out too much. Yeah. And that's it's, a- that's it's, it's reading that front to back too hard. It's, it's using all its energy up too early and going too straight. I need to go to something with a little more angle that's gonna get that 10 out. I would say that's a, a, a common thing between the two is the asymmetric is earlier and straighter and then the, the symmetric is longer and more curved, I guess. Yeah, it hooks more a little more. Curve. Yeah, generally they hook a little bit more down lane. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that video on the difference between an asymmetric and a sy symmetric bowling ball. It's a big difference, and it's important, especially when you're starting to bowl tournaments and you're starting to get to higher levels. Ball choices is absolutely everything. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. And before you leave, make sure you click that link below. It's a video on how to film yourself. It'll give, give you guys some great tips on how to produce a, a productive video when you're bowling. So click the free gift, and if you like this video, like and subscribe, please, please. See you guys. See you.